Hello everyone, this is Alex Cordobard, and in this tutorial we're going to be learning the different ways of lighting our scene and also how to render our images. Alright, let's get started. Before we look at the different ways of lighting our scene, let's set it up. I'm going to hit the T key to close the tool shelf and also split the viewport so that we have another window to work in. Going up here, I'm going to change it to Cycles Renderer. And now I'm going to hit G, Z, and 1 to bring up the cube 1 blender unit. Shift A, add mesh plane, and let's scale that up, S, 8, to 8 blender units. This one we're going to change to the rendered shading mode so that we can see what's happening with our lights as we move them around and change the options on them. And now selecting the default lamp in blender. We're going to go to the properties of that lamp by going to this icon right here and clicking on use nodes. You can see that this lamp right now that's selected is a point lamp. A point lamp emits light in all directions equally. If I go to top view and move it around, you can see the light and the shadow moving accordingly on the right. Right here, this option, the size, determines the softness or the sharpness of your shadow. If I put it to zero, you can see that the shadow is very sharp, and anything above that, the shadow becomes softer. The surface is set to em an emission, which is just like when we added the plane and added an emission shader to it to make it an emitter. You can change the color of the lamp to change the color that the light is giving. And you can also change the strength of it to change how bright or dark the lamp is. Right here you have another option which is cast shadow which makes it so that the shadow is seen or not seen. The next lamp is the sun lamp which as you can see right now is really bright because on the point lamp the strength is measured in watts and the sun lamp is measured in something else. So let's put the strength down to 1 and also the size down to 0 to have a sharper shadow. Now the sun lamp shines the light in one direction as shown by this dotted line right here and the rotation of the lamp matters. As you can see, if I rotate it, the light and the shadow of the object changes, but the location does not matter. If I have it right here, it's no different than having it all the way over here, because the light source from this lamp is infinite. So just remember that the rotation matters, but the location has no difference. Just like before, you can change the color and the strength and the size. And the next one is the spot lamp. Now the spot lamp is not supported yet and it's interpreted as a point lamp. So it's acting the same as this one. Same thing with the Hemi. It says not supported, interpreted as a sun lamp. So it's acting as this one. In the future builds of Blender, I'm sure they will implement this into it, but for now, it's not working. The next one is the area light, which emits light from a rectangular or square surface. So right here, you could choose square or rectangle. And if you put the size up, you can see that it increases the size of the square. I'm going to hit Alt-R to clear the rotation and then I'm going to put the size all the way or no leave the size up and put the strength up also and now you can see what this light is doing and just like before you can change all the other options now this is one way to light your scene but another way is to use emission objects using emission objects you can better control exactly how your scene is going to be lit with the lamp selected I'm gonna hit X to delete it and then in top view add a plane. Bringing this plane up above the cube and scaling it. I'm then going to go to the materials tab and add a new material and change it to emission. 
you can see that right away the plane acts as a light source and is lighting our scene. Now to get the shadow of the cube sharper or softer, since there's no option right here, all you have to do is to get it sharper, scale the plane down and the shadow becomes softer, but also you will see that the strength of the light becomes a lot less. So all you have to do to compensate for that is bring the strength up. So I'm going to put that to 8. And you can now see that the shadow is a lot sharper. To make it softer, just scale the plane up, which in turn also brings the brightness of the lamp up. So you have to bring that back down. And you can see that the shadow is a lot softer. Now let's say in your render you don't want to render this big white plane. To not render that, all you have to do is go over here to the object data, go down here to ray visibility, and deselect camera. Now the light is still being rendered, and it's still lighting the scene, but the big white plane, or the emission object, is no longer rendered. I'm going to reselect this, and then go back to the materials tab. Now, Emission objects don't have to be restricted to just using planes. You can add them to anything else. If I move this plane, then select the cube, and shift right click the plane, then hit Control L, and copy the materials, you will see that now the cube has an emission material to it. And if I bring this up to 4, you will see that the cube is now an emitter object also. So you can use any object that you would like as an emission. Also, you are not restricted to using the whole object as an emission. You can choose which parts of it will emit light. If I delete the cube and the plane, then add a new cube, and add a new material and leave it on diffuse, then hit the plus sign to add a new material slot. Add a new material and change this one to emission. Now going into edit mode by hitting tab, I'm going to hit control R for the loop cut. Left click and then right click to bring it back to the center. And then once again control R, left click and then left click to confirm again. Control tab to go into face select mode and alt right click this face loop. Then on the second material, the one with the emission, click on assign. Hit tab to go into object mode and you can see right away that the face loop right here is now an emitter object. And you can change the color and do exactly like the other ones. So this way, as I said, gives you more control on exactly how you want to light your scene. Now let's take a look at the basics of rendering. So right here you can see that this viewport is selected to rendered viewport shading. Now this way is great when you're working on your project to see how your finished project will be from any angle that you want. But this is not the way of getting a finished image or animation. So let's change this back to solid view. And now over here, let's hit zero on the numpad to go into camera view. And let's go to the rendered properties. Now the two main options to render it is whether you want to render it as an image or an animation. If I select image or hit F12 for the shortcut, it will render one still image at the current frame that it's in and where the position of the camera is. So let's go ahead and do that. Hit F12 and you can see that it renders a still image. If you want to save that image, just go to image and click save as image. Now let's say you make a change to the cube and you want to see whether that change is better or if it's better how it was before. The way to do that is with the cube selected, let's go to the materials and give it a different color. And now going back to the UV image editor with the rendered image. Let's go right here and select slot number two and hit F12 to render again. And now it will render the green cube and to see the difference we could cycle between slot one and slot two. 
or hit one and two on the keyboard to switch. Now that's the way to render an image. To render an animation, you would select this button right here and it will render all the frames that are listed right here. So right now if you click that, it will render frame one to frame 250. And it will render it at 1920 by 1080. Except that right now the percentage is at 50%. So it, this applies to animation and image and right now it's only rendering it as half the size. So if we put this to 100% and hit F12 again, you will see that now the image is at 1920 by 1080, whereas before it was only half the size. Over here is the output folder of where your animation is going to be rendered. So when you click animation, right now it's going to be rendered to TMP, which is not really good. To change it, just click on here, and then select desktop or wherever you want and create a new folder there and make it render to there so that all your images or your movie is saved in that folder where you know where it is. Now the last thing that you need to know about rendering images or animations is over here. One last thing also right here, this is the format of what you're going to render. So you could render it as an image, PNG or JPEG, or you could render it as a movie. Now I suggest always rendering it as an image because if you're rendering it as a movie, then it might crash and then you have to restart all over. But if you render it as an image, you can just start off from where it crashed. I'll do another tutorial on this later. The last thing you need to know is the integrator right here, which is basically the quality of your render. Right here, the preview, or sorry, the render samples right here, the first one, is how much noise or how much less noise you're going to have in your final image. So right now it's set to 10. Let's bump that number up to 40. Now if I hit F12, you will see that the samples are going 8 out of 40. So the more samples there are, the less noise there will be, but the longer it will take. Once it reaches 40, it stops. You can see the difference of how much noise there is. If I put this back to 10 and then re-render it on a different slot, you can now see that the second one is much clearer. The preview samples right here are the samples that are used for the rendered viewport shading. It's the same as this, just it's used for the preview. The seed right here gives you a different noise pattern. So right here the noise will be shifted a little bit into a different position. And if you're finding that your renders are taking too long, you can play around with the bounces light paths and transparency and if you put those down and put no caustics it will give you less render time but it will also be not as high quality so that's the basics of rendering an image or an animation I will go more in depth in later tutorials but for now this is still the basics I hope you learn the basics of lighting and rendering and I'll see you in the next one